we're live with a count. We're live with a minute countdown left. Forty-five seconds. Johnny boy, how you doing? Oh man, I'm doing really well. I am excited to see your bearded face. You've been out of town. You just got back. I and here we are. How are you, my bearded buddy? Good, good. A little tired, but uh, glad to be home for like a few days. Um, and uh, just kind of hanging out. And I know you're getting ready to head out of town. I fly away to Cabo on Monday. Family trip. At the end of it is a wedding and fall break is next week so just taking the fam sitting at the beach and then filming on friday or thursday and friday in cabo flying back to tulsa um on saturday finishing mm -hmm. up a wedding that it, blake is shooting for me on saturday with him sunday packing monday going to venture workshop it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast so but speaking of going to be a blast nick today is going to be a blast it's going to be a lot of fun it is going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I'm I'm excited to do this. This was an idea that uh, you had a while ago about us doing some, you know, like film breakdowns of our own, uh, our own stuff. And so I'm excited to uh, get in here and and do this with you. Um, this is actually a HTFW plus perk. Mm. Um, and uh, if you haven't heard HTFW plus, it's a new subscription service that we are offering. And uh, one of that is that we're going to be doing film breakdowns of our work and maybe some other people's work in that exclusively to that community. But as kind of the first one and to get the name of How to Film Weddings Plus out there in that service, we wanted to make this one available for everyone. So that's what we are doing right now is a breakdown of your Guatemala film. And I'm pretty excited yeah. to to watch it. Yes. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to, it's my most recent film that I just put out, uh, everyone in the world now than the wedding film world makes fun of me. Cause I've said the word Guatemala so many times, but, um, a lot of people, I've got a lot of comments saying like DMS about this film, just being on the next level or things like that. And we just want to like Nick and I once a month break down one of our recent films you can critique it. Uh, if you want to judge it on a scale of one to five for the five different categories, we can post those um, just on what you think. And if you have any feedback for me, that'd be great. And then if you have questions about it at the end, we can even scrub towards a certain spot, um, show you what we did, like really kind of dive into the kinds of lenses we were using, how we edited it, anything open book just a deeper dive into this film and what it took to actually pull it off. So yeah, without further ado, I think we can just play the film. Yeah. Blake, make it happen. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, there it is. There, there, there is. he is. There he is. Here we go. What a perfect setting at this very sacred moment. Captions. For 490 years, people had gathered in this very stunning church to make much of God. Let's be clear. This is more than a beautiful location because today we're gathering together for a worship service.
cannot believe it stays here. Me either. Seems like you're flipping around in those plastic high heels <laughs> and the bell on the beast dresses <laughs> just a few days ago. I was there when you looked up. There's my girl. The and there's my boy. And here we are today on your wedding day. Okay, what are y'all doing today? Back up. What a beautiful bride you are. I know you thought you were alone. You're my longest friend. And like, I don't get to make another one of those. Like, you're it. All the while I'm alone. You like it? Pride Wars <laughs> is our favorite movie of all times. The two little girls, they grew up as best friends, and a blue crystal flower pen fell out of the bride's hair and they picked it up and used it for their wedding dress up. Oh, so and then it was there's something blue in both of their weddings. One of the most special conversations that we ever had in my life was Alec called me one day and said, hey, I found God. One thing I really want to get across to you guys is there is not another man that I have seen represent God's love for others. He strives to be better, and that made me want to be a better person. Oh, thank you! Your poppy was very passionate about you from the day you were born. I just believe he's going to be here with us. But I wanted you to have something that would just be a little reminder that your poppy is with you. Let me turn your night today. And so this is your something blue. So that's his handwriting on there for you. And um, so you can carry that with you and know your poppy's with us. Let me wipe your tears away. The tears Alec, I'm so thankful that God is... <laughs> chose me to be your mother. Get out of that high chair. I can't watch you play in the streets anymore. I can still yeah. love you. I can't drive you to school and back and watch you play baseball, but I can still love you. I will always love you. That's the thing I can always do and always will. You are one of the greatest friends I've ever had. How consistent you are in prayer, like not even just in your encouragement, but also in your prayer. I know without a doubt when you said that you were praying for me that you, you really meant that. I know for the Bible tells me so. You are inspiring to me because you love people and that taught me when I was little to love people too. I am so lucky to have a younger brother that I can look up to and say that he is my best friend. And it's really great just to have someone so strong right next to you. Everything we did when we were little, I wanted to do exactly like you because you were such light in my life. I wanted to be like you because so many people love you. <laughs> and they thought you were like amazing. My heartbeat was the first heart you've ever heard. And I knew one day that this would come. Catherine, you are the one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you look so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I cannot believe it stays here. The word I chose for you is vibrant because literally brought all of the color into my life. You brought an element of brightness. It's just so bold, not only like in your faith, but also just in your personality. You're loyal in the way that, that you fight for people. For your whole life, you've been determined. You're passionate about the Lord. You're passionate about your friends and your family. And your strength is out front, but your gentleness is your real gift. Can I hug you? Yes. Two? You're growing up. It's kind of like we're, our kids are like the older ones now. It's not too late to back up. <laughs>
Can you hear me? <laughs> See, they just can't grow up, can they? Mine, I know, I'm, and I don't want them to. All right. First one. Alec, this is my big sister. My whole life, Catherine, I've looked up to you, and I look at you, and I still see, you know, my big sister. Here they come. Come here to mommy. And I look at you with the same awe and love that, that I did when we were little, little. I've always thought the world of her and had the highest possible standards you could ever have. You, you are the man that God has placed in her life forever. Catherine, are you coming? Take thee, Catherine. Take thee, Catherine. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To lead and to protect. To lead and protect. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. What makes all the difference in the world is that you know your character is not by your own works, but by Christ in you. That is why I want to be led by and loved by you until I take my last breath. You are the love of my life, Alec. You are my person, my best friend. He's a man of God, and he cares for my sister like nobody I've ever seen care for anyone else. I really know y'all are going to change people's lives together, and y'all are going to be so much stronger together. <laughs> I know. It's pretty wild. That was the best moment of my life, hands down. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, five out of ten. I would sweet. Say. Yeah, sweet. Sweet. Yeah, so. Sweet. How um, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So it, this is, I think Mike said it in the comments, uh, and I, I really appreciate this because I don't want this to be something, uh, you know, that is like, uh, I want this to be something. It's a reminder. Mike says, anyone who needs to hear this, don't compare yourself to this film, but it be inspired. 
and uh and that in, in time experience and passion that one day it's possible uh i really appreciate that that uh, i've never i've always felt that way like when watching other people's films and stuff and i finally feel like after 15 years of shooting weddings like this is kind of the culmination to me of me really understanding who i am as a filmmaker and what i want to produce and how i want to incorporate the actual story of the couple and how to layer it in such a way that feels like this is us almost we're like multiple layers going on at once with the parents film and the kids film and their wedding day and thinking towards the future and this build and so anyway um so what i'd love to do um is uh if you have questions i saw some people asked in the the comments but um blake do we want blake to kind of grab a couple of the questions and then we can chat about them sure. um and then Sure. If you want to judge the film, you can. I would love any feedback. Um, there's a couple things I know I wished I would have changed already, but um, creativity, audio, slash sound design, editing, story, and color. Those are the things, um, right? Yeah. That's, I don't I still think got creativity was one of them, was it? Was creativity? Cin cinematography. I wrote it go. wrong. Cinematography. That's the there first one. This is on my paper from uh, when we did the film reviews. Um, so... Um, sorry for making you cry, Tom. Um, your heart's doing the clapping. I love all this. So weird to have people watch your film. I'm not going to lie. It's a vulnerable thing. So it, anyway. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And um, why don't you, John, maybe as people maybe are asking questions or thinking about it, why don't you kind of give a, uh, a little breakdown, maybe some backstory about what you did here? Because... You know, I think when I first started and I was watching stuff like this, like, I, how did you get all of this stuff? And so mm -hmm. why don't you take, you know, uh, how many days were you there? How many days were you filming? What events did you shoot? Um, yeah. And then you could, you know, talk about the gear that you brought and, you know, that kind of stuff, maybe just a little bit, but just to give a little context of this film. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just read Cherish Conklin's comment and I'm about to start crying. Thank you. Okay. Um, that means a lot coming from, from you, uh, Cherish. So uh, this film, they are from Tulsa, where I'm from. And uh, the dad is a pastor at a church here in town and uh, really good friends with um, a, a very affluent family in town and uh, the, the same family that sent me to Italy and to Cabo and several big weddings here in Tulsa. And he gifted this to them as a gift to his pastor and his pastor's daughter, which um, is a, was a huge blessing. And he just said, I want you to go out there. I want you to cover everything. Just send me a bill. Um, I, I did not charge a lot for this. Um, all said and done, I think I charged them about 10K plus travel, um, which is not much for what we did. And for me to, um, to all the time, I, this is every bit of a thirty, forty thousand dollar film of time. Yeah, yes, yes. No, no. I, I'm, I'm laughing at you, not because, it, but you're like, I didn't charge them that much. Like it, it didn't. It was ten k. Okay. Plus yes, travel. it was. It was like, a lot. Like I, I. Yes, yes. But I, but it also like you've been doing this for fifteen years. Back to that comment of like Mike's. You know, you've been doing this for fifteen years or longer. You've been, you've been uh, learning a lot. You've been expanding and that kind of stuff. And so. Yes. Like to travel that far and only quote unquote, only make 12 K or 10 K, you know, from it, like yeah. that's, it's a lot of work for, especially when you include the travel time. And I know you were delayed for like half a day and just all sorts of stuff with it. So yeah. anyway, I'm after sorry everything, that. after paying yeah. Blake, after paying Weditor, um, after paying Ryan Coda to do audio design design, I'm making probably 4,000 bucks off of this thing for me. Um, yeah. So it wasn't, it was a passion project mixed in, but I knew this film could set me, I, I just knew it whenever I kind of heard where it was going to be and how it was going to be. So production wise, um, mm -hmm. I told the couple that I would love to get any and all home footage of them beforehand. I drove to their houses. I picked up boxes of VHS tapes. I digitized them all in real time, over 20 hours of footage that I had. I bought a VCR. I bought the the right things to digitize. I bought cameras that match the same kind. Like I did a lot of work. I probably put 20 or 30 hours in of like digitizing home footage. Again, this is an investment into my future, knowing that people will now pay me to do this because they've seen the product. Um, mm -hmm. So I did that. I had that all beforehand and I had looked and scrubbed through some of it. But actually, as we're sitting here right now, I'm digitizing footage from my 
Baton Rouge wedding I just did, and I'm not watching it all as it happens. So I'm just scrubbing through and saying, oh my goodness, there's a shot of her as a kid, as a bride. That's unreal. Or here's the first day of school. Oh my gosh, like this footage is so legit. So I spent, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but I spent 20 or 30 hours just like it going in the background, not like hard work on it. Um, but the actual wedding day, it's or wedding trip itself, Blake, you might have to step in here because it's a little blurry. But I think we were there for like five total days. Um, I, I think it was five days, maybe four days. Um, when we first got there day one, um, I got delayed. I got there super late. Blake just got to the hotel. So the second day when we really got there, we went out to breakfast. We had our cameras with us. A lot of the footage you see of town or the lady cooking food or when they talk about the vi vibrance in the film and you see like architecture and buildings and drone footage, a lot of that we did on day one. We learned quickly that uh, it gets really overcast at that season of the year. And if you want to see volcanoes, you got to be up super early. So day one was just shooting. And I think that night was like a get together dinner that we showed no footage from um, except for footage of the drone flying through a cloud at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just like a dinner we got to eat and I got to sit down with grandma and it, one of the things that was really cool is grandma, uh, Mamu was her name in the, uh, just in getting to know her and mom, Meredith, uh, mom of the bride, like I immediately connected with them and really started learning their family story and their best friends were there and, um, all these different things. But Mamu had lost her husband, like a, the same time that my dad passed away, like two years ago. And so we immediately connected on that and started talking on that on that night. And I had been digitizing footage and I had taken a couple of screen grabs to send to the bride. And um, I pulled up on my phone and said, oh, is this your husband? Because I had sent a screenshot of this grandpa with Catherine. I didn't know he was gone at the time. Showed it to grandma. She immediately starts bawling. And she's like, that's him. I haven't seen that footage in 25 years. Oh, my gosh. And like we just connected the family. I mean, it just was we were in and they just, we built that trust with them. Um, so that was, you know, a little side story, but that was day two. I think day three, we filmed around town a little bit more, um, filmed a brunch where it was just the girls. Um, and they all w went around the table and said one word about the bride. And it just, I didn't tell them to do that, but we were, um, when I say we, it was me and Blake the whole time. Um, and we went to a brunch filmed around town every chance we got. I walked into a random restaurant one night and filmed a, a band playing. I'm just filming birds flying on anything and everything, the sounds, the smells I'm trying to capture. Um, and then the next day was the rehearsal and rehearsal dinner. It was pouring rain. Uh, it was like not the ideal situation. Um, a lot of the speeches you saw there, they were holding this little Sony TX 660 cause we couldn't get Mike ran how we wanted to, and there was no sound system. And, um, but that was the night before the wedding. And then we were there all day shooting on the wedding day. So we were there shooting a lot of different things. Blake, did I miss anything of what we shot? Uh, no, that was it. We were there for five total days. Okay. Including the, so, the day of travel in and the day of travel out. And there was a lot of times where like Blake and I just go out in the morning and we were going to go walk to breakfast and it was like, bring your drone. It's clear right now. Fly it. Let's see. Let You can see the volcanoes because around Guatemala are three active volcanoes. Um, and it was like, if you didn't get up in the morning, you wouldn't get those shots. And um, Blake, I see you have the Guatemala or that pulled up. I don't know, but um, off to the side there, the, but the volcano stuff, uh, the drone footage of it's all, all Blake. Um, and so that was kind of how it broke down, um, during the wedding day itself, Blake was with the guys, I was with the girls. And then we also brought in someone local, Rodrigo Zadro. If you don't follow him, you should, he's got a massive following and his films are ridiculous. But on the day of the wedding, just looking at the timeline, I was like, oh, there are, um, there's, we need to be in three places and there's only two of us. And so I had Zadro get to the ceremony location, get tripod set up, get some BTS of um, just a couple shots of them, like unrolling the the runner that went down the aisle and people putting things on tables. And um, so he kind of just hung with us the whole day and I paid him to be there too. So that was kind of the long version of the breakdown of how we did that. Yeah. I, I think that it, it's nice hearing that because, um, you know, you, you're there and you're spending multiple days and you have a lot of, I mean, it's a, 10 and a half 
<clears throat> excuse me, it's a 10 and a half minute captivating film. And it's really hard to make a 10 and a half minute captivating film if you're only showing the one day, unless just a lot of crazy stuff happens. But for the most, from my experience, trying to do a 10 minute film on only one wedding day is really, really difficult and having it, very. the energy keep up. And so um, you were there multiple days filming lots of different stuff. Um, I'm sure a lot of questions, well, um, a question that I had came with the fireworks stuff at the end. Was that um, stuff that you shot? Was that stock footage? Was it a mix of both? What What was that? We shot it. Um, I don't think that we used it. We might have used one stock shot um, of okay. like the spraying, uh, like when the bride was kind of dancing and there was a shot. But I think it was, Blake, we filmed all that. I mean, Blake was flying the drone. Into the at, fireworks. Like, into the fireworks. I was. I had a small light and was lighting up the couple from the front, from the back, getting all different angles. And the fireworks show was like 15 minutes long. Yeah. So it was just, it was kind of boring and anticlimactic, to be honest. Um, but it gave me plenty of time to be like, sweet, let me get that. And one thing I've learned about fireworks footage is like, I never would light the couple. And I've done so many shots with um, fireworks where like the couple is just black and you can't see them. It's dark. So bringing like a little soft light so we could see their faces like looking up and um, actually I didn't bring that. That light was an actual light that was supposed to be lighting up the building. That's why it was, I brought a light out there, but there was already one like uncomfortably bright one in their faces. So, um, but yeah, we flew and Blake was just like riding around in the drone flying through, uh, which he's licensed to do uh, at night Yes, with his license, just so you all know. So don't be stupid. I fly from time to time with no license, but Blake uh, follows all the rules. Um, yeah. So that's how we got those. Um, yeah. Uh, so we want, do you have any more questions, Nick, or do you want to like maybe steal some from the comments? Um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, you've, you've talked about it. Um, how many days did we talk to so you were there for five days total filming? Mm -hmm. Um, you have a second shooter, um, with you, Blake on this one. And for mm -hmm. most of these, uh, ones that are multi-day things you're having, you're at least bringing in a second person, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, all of the ones where I've traveled this year, I've brought Blake, uh, next week I'm in Cabo and I'm hiring somebody local that I've shot with before in Cabo and Blake is leading for me here in Tulsa. So yeah, having the two of us, um, and having our cameras on us all the time, just in case we saw some woman carrying a bunch of baskets on her head or like that shot was while we were sitting having coffee. Mm -hmm. So we're just always kind of ready. And like Blake would be in the middle of a conversation and then I'd be like, Oh, and I just like pull my camera out and I'm just filming. And for the most part, the whole time I was there, I was on a 24 to 70, just so mm -hmm. you it was okay. just ready to go. And and this and this was shot with Sony FX3 A7S3. Yep. My main camera and Blake's for this one were the A7S3. And then we had FX3s as backups. And then uh Zadro also was shooting Sony. So and we shot it all in uh S log, 10 bit, 4K, uh, you know, 60 for the most part, lots of 24 for anything live. Um, it was graded with a Rec 709 that Blake has created that is not yet released to the world. Um, and then we also, I, I used the Illum LUTs on these and then uh, really went into detail with color grading with my editor. So wanted yeah. to, it was a little more moody because it was overcast every day. It was the rainy season, so it would rain and then stop and rain and stop. So it had a little mm -hmm. more of a, a dark mood to it. <clears throat> One thing I was going to point out too, I don't know if any questions have been about it, but if you go back and listen to it, the audio, um, I did pay an extra fee to have Ryan Coda with Weditor edit it for me. And if you're listening to the audio of the pastor in the the sanctuary where the church, he added a bunch of reverb to it and made it sound more boomy. And at first I was just like, that's echoey. And then the more I watched it, I was like, oh, this is, this feels way more like you were there. It sounded better on the film than it did in real life. So down to the booms of the fireworks, down to the water hitting the trees, like all those extra little details, that dialogue being crisp. And then the, the audio that came through the TX-660 sounded really like tinny, little metally, and he just cleaned it up and made it sound real clean and real good. So Yeah, I we whenever you had the second shoot for me in August, you showed me the um, 
the like the first version or something, the third version, somewhere early on in the process of it. And we were both talking about, man, I wish you would have had a different like something, you know, to capture that audio. And in going back and watching the final product, um, it it just it it's like they had something that was like a podcast mic or, you know, they, yeah. they had something a lot better than what that, that mic was. It sounded a whole lot better than that. So, um, yeah, we got, it was that audio that made me say, I'm going to pay the extra to have Ryan do this. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't do it on every single film, but if you guys don't know Ryan, he actually has his own IMDB page. He is edited for audio dialogue currently for Lucas films and like all of the Disney plus mm-hmm. star Wars dialogue. Like he's in the credits there editing all the dialogue so he knows his stuff in like two days he turned it around and like took it from really good sound to like i could he i mean it was amazing so mm-hmm. um it was worth the the investment all right i don't see any of the um yeah. i i want you to just just talk about this because i think that there's a little stigma in our industry it's it's changing and it's getting different but chris true has asked if you edited this film yourself and i just want you to kind of talk about your experience with that side of things. Yeah. So I exclusively have my films edited um, by Yasmin, uh, Yasmin Sheriff, I think is her last name, with Wediter. Um, she's based out of England and has been editing all of my films now since 2019. And we have spent countless hours back and forth on how I want my films to be. And it's like a really, really great one-two punch. Like she gets the film to a certain spot and then I say, okay, now I can get cooking and like really direct this thing. Um, I give her detailed notes of who's important, why they're important. I gave her all the footage um, from the home footage stuff I gave her and she helped layer it um, the way that I would, would have wanted or even better, but she sends me a version one. And before she even did that, she sent me a version one that just was what she was thinking when it came to where the music would be. And if you watch the story, it's kind of the story of Catherine, the bride, then Alec, the groom separate. And then the ceremony is where they come together. And then after that is when they're to get like a lot of the footage of them together. And she's like, I'm really thinking about like really telling the story of the bride as a kid, her family, the groom mixing that back and forth, but then really fusing that together at that, you know, the ceremony where it really hits. And so she showed me and we did a zoom call for, about an hour of walking through. This is what I'm thinking. What do you think here? What do you think there? And um, it's not just like I throw the edit and she sends it back and it's whatever. But after that hour long zoom call a week later, she sends me version one, which I watched. I sent it to Blake. I watched it probably 30 times without making a comment. Um, No joke. I watched it in my car, like driving as loud as it could go, like listening um, and gave it a few days just watching it. And then I left, I think, 155 changes or something crazy, um, which this film I knew I wanted to go next level. And so I made all these little changes. Can you like there's a shot of a statue early and in, in, uh, uh, we're parallaxing around it. But in the corner, you can see an exit sign or you can just little things that might take you out of the fact of this beauty of Guatemala or, you know, and there was about 25 more clips of home footage in it in the first you know, video. And I watched it with Heather, my wife, and was like, what do you think? And she's like, it just feels like a video about home footage, not about Guatemala. And so like we made all these changes. She gave me a version two and then we watched it again. And um, it did start with like this three columns of uh, uh, like a three-way screen of footage. I don't know, like uh, where it was uh, showing all this Guatemala stuff at the beginning. It was just too fast and it didn't let the film breathe. It didn't give this big like build. And it was like, so we had to change all that. But like uh, it was a very much of a group effort after they did version two, we got back on a zoom call and like walked through everything again together. So she could give me a version three um, after I got that one. And I made no more changes to it. I said, okay, I want to send this to Ryan for editing the audio and from there we finalized it exported it all this stuff down to all the little the color seems just a tad dark here the shadows are too low here i mean so i i probably spent on the edit alone myself eight hours of time um which isn't typical but with this one you know so it was a a big group effort with us and weditor and it ended up the edit was several thousand dollars for me Mm -hmm. to pay pay to have that done including the audio so 
Yeah. Um, I think I, again, and I know that this is changing in our industry and stuff, but I, I think that, um, there's like this thought out there that if someone else edit edits it, it's like they're doing the work and you're not really involved with it. You're just kind of okaying it. And um, while yes, you aren't actually in there doing it, you're still the one that's, you know, you're directing. directing you're, yeah. you're, you're saying, I don't like the direction here. I don't like this stuff. Um, it does feel like a home, a video about home footage because we have a lot of that. And so let's scrap a lot of that stuff. Let's, let's change these things. And uh, you know, I think that, um, like a, a good, a good editing house that can do this, like Wetter can, you know, it's like, whenever we talk to Michael over there at Wetter, he's like, if you go into Hollywood, the, the director isn't the editor, like their, mm-hmm. their job is to direct it, not to actually sit down and edit it. And so you're involved with it. I, I like to say, I, I like how you say like my fingertips are all over it. Like my fingerprints are all over the, mm-hmm. the film and stuff. So, yeah. Cause um, version yeah. one of what I got and what this is like version one was like, 90 percent of the way there like it was mm-hmm. close and yeah. version two like was 97 percent of the way, the way there and probably where i would have left it if it wasn't going to be like a flagship piece for me um but version three was me being just so ridiculously detailed about every single thing um it still ended up with there were three shots of the bride doing this with her and I just was at that point, it's like I'd find I'd seen it after like the third version. And it's like, I'm gonna leave those. I like all three of those shots. That was something though that now I wish I would have like replaced with something mm-hmm. else. Um, but all of this footage you're seeing on the screen, all of these things, you know, it's like very, very intentional. Um, and it it is true, like I was the director, and like I even put in the credits of this film, like. Blake is the cinematography like he basically directed lots of the cinematography was a cinematographer a second cinematographer being Zadro me being the director and the DP or you know it's like we really looked at it as like this is a a film and I honestly I was watching a Disney special on them creating I think it was and what was it? it's on Disney plus and it was like the I think it was frozen 2 is what they were creating yeah, that's what it was. And it was like the director and going back to the editors and going back and they do a screening and then they watch it again and they make notes and then they write it version two and they're filling these things in and we have to have a trailer out by this day and they get that out. And, and it's like this big collaborative effort. And to me, to produce something like this on my own just wouldn't be feasible. And so I look at it as wet editor's part of my team, Blake's part of my team, Ryan Coda's part of my team, Nick's part of my team. He's watching you know, the films and giving critique and there was a lot of feedback he had or Heather had that was like, yeah, you're right. A couple of shots. Nick was like, why, why is that in there? It's cool, but why? Or, um, but then I got to filter it back through. Like I left some of the things in there that Nick was like, I don't, I don't like that, but it was because I was, I intentionally wanted that in there or whatever. And it was cause it was, you know, my style and what I wanted. And that's, what's cool about what we do, but I did not edit it all myself is the answer. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, any, anyone else, um, have any, um, any other questions that you would like to know about, uh, this film, um, there in the comments? I see John, some there, comments. Yeah, go ahead. Was there, was there anything that just was really difficult that maybe us watching it, we're not picking up on, on the wedding day, but something that would just like ugh, this, this was just really, really hard. And we really had to work our way around this. Whatever. That's a good question. Yeah. The main things that were difficult were the fact that it rained a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't pouring, but it was just like the rain cleared on the wedding day and like gave us a little bit of time outside after the ceremony. And the photographer is a super sweetheart, but like it was very difficult she was wanting to get her family photos done and get like all that after the ceremony. And I can see rain clouds rolling in. And so if you notice in the film, we only had about 10 minutes with the couple together in their wedding attire. That sucked. That was difficult Mm -hmm. because it was like, she was wanting to do, we were wanting to walk around Guatemala and get footage of all the buildings with them. And like, there's all these different colors and all this brightness and we couldn't leave the venue. We couldn't get like, so we only had a few minutes and while we were doing it, the photographer uh, herself was supposed to get in on like Tuesday and her passport was damaged. So she didn't get in for like an extra two days. So she was just running behind and she didn't get footage or photos of the um, groom getting ready. She was just 
way behind and way over her head, not meaning to be, but just, and so we would try to set the bride and groom up and she'd be like, I need this shot too. And it's like, yeah, of course we know you need this. And she was just so stressed that it was like wearing off onto the couple. Um, and so that was something that was way more stressful. I was just like, man, we didn't get enough footage of the couple together. Um, and it started raining for the reception and it was like, there's some covered areas, but we couldn't shoot anymore because the bride was like, I don't want to get wet. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there was another thing too. The, the guys did an ATV tour where they were like driving ATVs around the cobblestone streets. Um, and we missed it because the bridal brunch got moved and I wanted Blake and me at this bridal brunch um, where you see the shot of them uh, talking to each other and all that stuff. Like I wanted both of us there. Um, and so we missed that. And I wish we would have been able to get a couple of shots of them riding around. That would have been cool. But yeah, it's not perfect. Not always perfect. So yeah. uh, Wagging Tail Studios asked, can you talk about the process of asking the family for home footage? How do you bring it up and present the idea of incorporating that into the film? Thanks. Yeah. Um, I just had been texting with the bride and I had done a film before just with some home footage. And I said, if you want, you can share with me any footage, home footage, iPhone footage, any, anything. And she was like, we have a bunch of old tapes, but they're like VHS and we haven't gotten them digitized. And I was like, well, I'll drive over to you and see if I can make them work. And she was like, okay, we'll put them, put them together. And I went and got them and then realized I didn't have the right kind of tape things. Like, so I just like spent time on Google, bought, you know, things from Amazon to get it digitized. And then I learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. It was uncomfortable and trying to figure it out. But, um, I just asked, and a lot of times I will say this is, you know, now I can show this film to people. It's like, do you want stuff like this? And as soon as the couple from Baton Rouge saw this, they said, we're mailing you a box of tapes. Um, and so that's more my style. I love that. I, you know, I saw films from a little long distance and was just like, yes, I have so much home footage for me when I was a kid. This was so important to me. So oh. yeah, that's, that's what I did. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. I saw a question. Uh, let me see. Uh, pitch the idea of home footage. How did you get so intentional for this film? I'm struggling to shoot for the edit. Um, we just filmed so much stuff uh, yeah. that we were very intentional about knowing the family and knowing the story and then just capturing everything. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, uh, Matthew Reed said, did you consider any other ways capturing the speech audio? Yeah, uh, we should have recorded that directly into a recorder. Blake, I don't remember why we didn't. Um, do you remember why we didn't at the rehearsal dinner or the, yeah, at the rehearsal was, dinner. So the little spot they were standing in, um, so it was raining pretty hard during that. And we had like one little sliver of a spot that we could make them stand to get the lights on them. Um, and like, we couldn't set up a mic where they were cause they were like standing. There's like a two foot drop off, like right in front of them. It was just all yeah. the, the location logistics of where they were standing. That's right. Yeah. I remember now that was, and, the, that was the hard part. That was difficult. And the light was hard because we couldn't get them exactly where we wanted them. And there were like seven foot ceilings inside, but there was an outdoor courtyard. It was just like this weird venue, like this weird spot where um, it's on the screen now. But like behind the lady talking here, the mom is covered, but she wasn't covered. She was out in a courtyard. And then to put the lights, there were tables. It was just very difficult to get shadow side speech lighting um it's not as good as i would want it to be um but if we would have put a mic right there it would have been hitting a table and getting hit by water a little bit of drizzle so i think that's why we stopped on that mm -hmm. um let me just double check way back here um music bed is where i got all the music um I did not ask the family for specific old footage uh, that went with the toast, Damien. Um, I just took everything and then we scrubbed through it to see what we could find. Um, it's kind of like digging for treasures. But if you notice on the screen, like the dad dancing framed up against the shots of them as little kids. I mean, it just, we had so much footage um, at the wedding day and we were able just to match a lot of it and there was a lot more footage a lot of deleted things that we weren't able to show that would have also been well, like great but 
um it, like i said it was like 15 hours of home footage so it was like 30 different vhs tapes um that i love the contrast between 4k 10 bit and home footage like i just love that and then we uh first thing we got from them was the film from her parents wedding and we've a couple of the shots you know nick was even asking like why is that there um and the it honestly is for the family first and that's like i knew that it would mean a lot for the dad to have a couple of shots of his wedding in this wedding film because of how important their relationship was um and so a couple of the shots of like the ceremony setup from their wedding, the mom and dad's right next to the ceremony setup from the bride and groom for this wedding, like just the contrast of it was so much fun to play with. Um, overall, like the heart of what I want to produce is films that hit that nostalgia so hard and the whole story of the couple so hard mixed with the beauty of what we can produce. And so I feel like this one, um, you know, you start thinking like this film, I don't know how much you would charge for this film or whatever, but, um, it's like shooting three or four weddings in one. So it's not like it's this huge, uh, profitable money-making thing. It's more so a fulfilling deeper level type of wedding film. And this isn't how all my films are by any means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, North park films. I think we mentioned this, but, um, John and I are both now shooting Sony on FX3 and A7S3, shooting S-Log3. Uh, Blake made a conversion LUT that we've been playing around with uh, that we like a lot uh, for that. And then we, John uses Illum LUTs for now um, for the color grade. And I'm using, uh, I think Jen is using uh, native forestries, native LUTs for our work over there at Wild Oak Films. Um, any other questions? There's one by Martin Film Productions. When you have 30 uh, weddings to shoot and edit, how do you find ways to really connect and get to know the couple? We have weddings where we show up on the wedding day and haven't met the bride and groom. Um, that, that's why I don't shoot that many. Yeah. Uh, and if I did have that many, I would have automated questionnaires that go out. I would have I would have more zoom meetings with them. I would meet them beforehand on zoom. Like I would put in that extra work, at least a four month out kind of get together. I do want it six months out and three months out and one month out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just my style. Some of the ones that are um, higher profile kind of weddings. I don't do personal weddings like that or personal meetings a lot. I meet with a planner, but yeah, the more time that I can hear from them and get to know them, the better if you have 30 there's only so much you can do so i would figure out a way to automate a lot of communication questionnaires getting to know their story um one of our questions on our questionnaire just says tell us your story like we want the whole thing um and they write out their whole story a lot of times i use that for their blog this is what they said about their story and then i copy and paste it and i don't even have to write my own um my own blog at all so um yeah yeah um any wedding LUT recommendations? Uh, there, there are tons out there. Uh, Gamut.io has some incredible LUTs um, over there. Uh, Forestry has one. Our friends uh, Cherish and Lindsay at Larev just launched one this week. And if you go to, what is it? Larev LUTs? Yep. Is that what it is? Yeah, you go to larevluts.com. Use promo code HTFW this week. You can uh, save a little bit of something not sure what it is but you can save something there so yep. um john what if anything would you do differently to make uh to make the time taken to create this film more efficient uh, this film definitely was not about being efficient uh on time um like i shot it in may and just released it last month so um i don't know i feel like every year there should be a couple of films where you're not doing mm -hmm. that this was more of a passion project meets a wedding for me knowing that i only want five or six of something like this every year um and this kind of film i think um to me would put put films in a 20 plus thousand bracket and if i'm doing six or seven of those i'm i'm happy mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean you've you've got to like 
sow the seed first before you see the harvest of it, I guess so. And that's kind of what this was for me. Yeah. Um, and I'm already seeing the benefits, even with people that I'm working with, the Baton Rouge couple I just worked with. I'm just ingesting footage right now and seeing little home footage snippets. And it's just like more and more people will see that that's my style and want that. But I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know if I would want to be more efficient with it. I don't know. Like the, the thought, the thought that I have is one, you are being more efficient with it because you have an editor. And mm -hmm. so if you would have, like if you would have yourself done all of this stuff, if you had the technical ability to do all of this stuff, you would still be working on it mm -hmm. like to this day with all the other stuff. And so uh, that's, that's part of it. And I think that um, whenever you get to this level, whenever you do have an editor, um, like I, you know, with our films, I would much rather me spend, you know, five, eight, 10, 12 hours on an edit after, you know, to get it really where I want it than you know, that 35, 40, 45, you know, for me to do it all myself. And so, yeah, that's a good um, point. It, it's, it, it's just kind of, it's just kind of a different way to, to look at it, but also if the goal, and I know the goal for you is five to seven for 2023, you can spend this much time if you're only doing it five times out of the year versus if you're like Chris was saying, you know, 30 weddings, like you, you could maybe do it once or twice to go above and beyond that next level stuff, but you're not going to be able to do that every single week. No. And no. that's, I mean, that's, I want to be very boutique and very like I'm booked up. And if you want me, you're going to pay a lot more. And this kind of film, I think, um, really sets me apart from other people and saying this, if you want this kind of film, John is one of the only people that can do that for you. And that's kind of um, leaning further and further into that. Um, and again, like Mike was saying at the beginning of this is like, I wouldn't watch this and say, well, like do, there's no way I can do that. Cause I've got 40 films, but maybe you could say one or two of my films in a year, I'm really going to go next level for what I can do that year. Mm -hmm. Maybe even lose money on the film so that you can like these are marketing dollars that I spent. Like I didn't, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't lose money necessarily on the film. I like, um, I got a really cool trip trip to Guatemala. I got to eat really cool food. I got to relax by the pool with Blake and like have a good time and make memories and different things like that. But the amount of messages I've gotten from filmmakers, the amount of messages I've gotten from couples, and like saying I just saw that film. This thing deserves an award. This, like, that is paying dividends to me like i it, i think it sets me in, in a non-flexing kind of way i think it does set me on a, a path to a different level of film and clientele um and as i'm discovering that i don't want to do high profile luxury weddings like i don't want to not know the couple um like i don't want to just meet planners and get referrals from planners i want to know the couples and like work with mm -hmm. people and um and this really just says like, uh, you know, a celebrity is not going to necessarily want this. Um, and they, they might, but that's not going to like, they're mainly going to want something that shows off their big event. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, you, you, for the lava stuff, you stock footage, right? For the for lava shows. stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We contemplated not, but here was where we were with it is that the volcano was erupting while we were there. And we were getting shots of the volcano erupting, but the the clouds were so bad. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I had them use two stock lava footage uh, from Motion Array. I think so. Yeah, it's yeah. also a like three day hike to get up there to get that close to them. So it just wasn't feasible for us to get up there and do it. Yep, but it was Guatemalan volcano. Like I mean, we found yeah. footage mm -hmm. that was that. Yeah, And there were like five other clips of it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, we got to pair this way back, like just a little bit, sure. just to, to show some of those things. So, sure. and, and I know that there are some people that like Ugh, stock, like I feel like dirty or bad or awful, like using that kind of stuff or, you know, even with sound design stuff, you know, it wasn't captured on the audio and, you know, on the day, but like whenever you get, get into any other, like 
video production stuff that you continue to go up the ladder of video production. They they are looking, they are licensing footage just like we're licensed. I mean, we didn't write the music. We didn't create the music, but yeah, we're using that in our film. Like it's the same, same idea. And I like how you put some parameters around, around it. Like, okay, if I'm going to use lava footage, one, I need to make sure that the volcano was erupting so that it makes sense. And so at least a couple things that, you know, we potentially got that. And then the other one is I'm going to use Guatemalan volcanoes, not yeah. African volcanoes or wherever, you know, you know, somewhere else in the world. So it totally, totally makes sense mm-hmm. with that. So that's cool. Have you thought about um, a VHS or mini <clears throat> DB cam to bring to weddings? I just bought one. It's a Sony. It's sitting on my desk, di- di- like ingesting the footage. Uh, it's like a high eight video recorder, like a mom dad cam. I'm definitely going to take that to local weddings and just hand it to people at the reception and incorporate footage and maybe grab a few clips of like mm. ceremony setup details on it just so I can have it. Yeah. Um, and I'm also giving it to my little girls so they can like take it and make videos with it. Cause that was yeah. really important to me when I was a kid is having a video camera around. Um, so yeah, good question. That's good. That's good. Uh, Chris asked, do you tell your couples how long their film will be? Um, and, when you treat a film like this or um, do you just kind of make it how long you want it to be? Good question. Uh, on this film, the, I was in a very perfect situation where this couple was just blown away that I was coming. It was a gift to them. They were happy with just me being there. And so it allowed me to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to be at all these things. I want to be there early. I want to stay there late. And so I didn't give them necessarily parameters i think i i mean i i wrote a contract and i think i said eight minute film and it ended up being 11 minutes um or 10 41 or something but uh, i usually yes um usually my contracts are saying eight minute film 10 minute film um things like that and i will build that custom based on how many days i'm shooting Um, and I, I let them know, like, this is kind of what I'm thinking, but if it needs to be less or a little bit more, I'll let you know. And that way I don't have the handcuffs of like, wow, this film should be five minutes, but now I have to make it nine and it's going to be really boring. So good question. Um, Hey Blake, can you cut to a wide shot of from the back Mm -hmm. where you can kind of see, uh, everyone standing at the front there? from up up above yeah from like the balcony angle um waggle tail asked i noticed you weren't in front of the altar for the ceremony but the photographer was was there a reason that one right there Wa- waggle tail <laughs> yeah like Wagging. why why are you why are you over there in the white shirt to the side and the photographer you can see her kind of kneeling down there at the front there's mm-hmm. wondering placement so um a couple things Number one, if you look to the far left, you can see Zadro is on the groom angle um, behind the candles um, opposite of me getting the groom's face. And then I was standing t- like between where groom is and dad is kind of bending down while they were coming down the aisle, shooting up the aisle. But I had talked to the photographer and she said that she was not going to get in front of me <laughs> and she kept getting in front of me. Um, yeah, I was standing right there where that arrow is. Um, and Blake was following behind and that when she got to the back of the aisle, I scooted over to that spot right there where I was standing. Um, and that's where I stood with my monopod and actually filmed the whole ceremony on the monopod. Um, so during the processional, I was, uh, in between basically where the groom is and where his mom is just filming up the aisle, filming people. Um, and at a certain point, I just didn't want to take a risk. Um, so when she got like the doors were about to open that sort of thing, the photographer was just standing dead center in the middle of the aisle. And I knew she was going to like ruin my shot, even though we had talked about it. So I scooted over to that far side. Cause I knew there was like 50 feet of time for her to like be walking towards me. It wasn't perfect, but in that mm-hmm. moment I decided we, I know we've got a groom shot. I know Blake is getting a really good shot of the gimbal and I don't want to be in his shot. And I know the photographer is going to be in the way. And so I just thought I'm getting over here because there was four rows of empty chairs in the back there that I could shoot past and still get a good shot of the bride. Yeah. That's good. That's good. 
probably we've been doing this for an hour so probably just a, a few more minutes or so of this but benjamin no. kelly asked how do you always get such good exposure oh, thank you <laughs> um it's it's work especially shooting in sony uh in the s log having to make sure you're at 640 at the minimum or bumping into 12,800 iso um my main <clears throat> main thing that helps us is the external monitors and looking at my light meters on those, having zebras on like the actual camera screen and then being able to watch the big seven inch screen um, just to kind of check to see, but it's not always perfect. We have to brighten things up. We have to bring things down. Um, mm -hmm. Then the other key to that is that like we light things um, like that shot of the groom that's on the screen, reading his letter, Blake did all that. Um, where you, you know, you put in the subject in a spot where you want them, where we are paying attention in students of light all the time. So we're, I'm just naturally walking into a room and saying, that's where I want them to stand. That's how I want them to stand. But then after dark, I don't just, um, let them be in a specific spot. If the getting ready area looks bad, I move them. If, um, you know, I, I'm asking them kindly, but, uh, they allow me to move them and we just work with our monitors and try to I said it, I think in our mastermind group last week is like, I'm just trying to make layups all day long. Just simple, short, good form, just two points at a time, layup, 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 fundamentals, pass good, shoot good. Like, and I'm just worried, worried about my fundamentals. And then we, after we have those, we then focus on eye candy, um, getting mm -hmm. a few shots, um, you know, drone stuff, gimbal stuff you know, a couple of eye candy shots, but if you notice it's the majority of the footage is just properly lit, properly composed. I mean, we're trying, it's not always perfect, but, um, yeah. 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 Yep. Good. Cool. Good stuff there. Good stuff there. Well, um, hopefully, uh, you all out there that are live watching, have found this helpful. Um, if you are not a part of it, I will plug one more time. HTFW plus, which is at htfwplus.com and you can sign up and we will be doing this uh, to that group exclusively every month. Uh, so you will get exclusive access to something like this uh, where we'll review our films, maybe Blake's films or, you know, someone else that we choose, maybe a special guest that we'll bring on to, uh, to do something like that. Dude, uh, I would love to do your uh, Cape Town film next. Yeah, okay. Be awesome. We can, we can do that. Um, we can do that next one. Next That'd month. And you gotta be, you gotta be an HTFW plus it's eight yes. bucks. Come on, yes. join us. And yeah. and you get your first month for free if you go over there and sign up with that if you are not a part of that yet. So, um, yeah. oh, this is, it, it's going to another one, John. Oh, yeah, we can watch Peyton and McKenzie if you'd like. No. It's one of my last Canon weddings. Oh. Yeah, so uh, anyway, um, there we are with that. So, uh, John, good work, good work. I didn't, I didn't review it, but um, like give you a, a number score, but it would have scored high. It would have been Thanks. high. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys out you would, there. You feedback. would have got an HTFW badge, I think. Oh, I think wow. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I'm excited to enter it in Love Stories TV for this year. Just to, you know, I think it'll be like, I've never cared about stuff like that, um, but I mm -hmm. think it will be fun to get out of my comfort zone on that. And um, and I appreciate everybody's kind words and hanging around and watching this. And if you're watching it in the future, thank you for watching. And Nick, it's yeah. always good to hang out with you. And Blake, thanks yeah. for producing today. Yeah, of thanks, course, guys. And so uh, we appreciate it. Until next time, we'll uh, we'll see you. Bye. See ya.